what to do if you are the only one that sees a problem with the communication in your relationship. So what if you're the one, like somebody might be listening to this now, the spouse doesn't care about making things better, at least right now. What should that person do? I think awareness to that reality is helpful. I don't think there's necessarily any action that you can take to rectify the fact that they're checked out and that they don't want to improve the way that they communicate so that you're not fighting all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything that you can do other than, I think there's a lot you can not do. I think there's a lot that you, I think there's a lot that you can do to not allow yourself to fight, to not allow your, I'm not saying to let yourself get beaten. I'm not saying to let yourself just get run over by your spouse's communication. I'm just saying, I think there's ways in which you can add to the de-escalation, add to the desire to not fight, and that be the kind of modus operandi of the relationship where you're just like, nope, I don't want to fight anymore. And every conversation, I'm going to annoy you. And it will be annoying. Please try not to make it annoying to your spouse that you're somehow above them in your communication. Because you're trying to de-escalate. Because you're trying to be the better person. Yeah. That will probably, that will be annoying at first, but it is hard to engage in a fight when the other person is unwilling to fight. Right. Which is a positive. There's going (laughs) to, there's going to be a little bit of a balancing act happening because you're going to try and not be annoying to your spouse and act like you're above them. And you're going to be doing everything in your power to de-escalate and not fight. Which is, which you mean... To help your spouse come to an understanding, hopefully, potentially, that not fighting is the way you desire to communicate in the relationship. And you can do that by, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misunderstanding you, you can do that by not being defensive, asking questions about whatever it is that they brought up so you can figure out why they're upset or try to figure out a solution to the problem, but do that without engaging in the fight. I'm just trying to speak to the difficulty because, you know, as the Bible says, kind words are like heaping coals on your enemy's heads. And in a fight, you're making that person an an enemy. So if your spouse is continuing to fight, even though you don't desire to communicate in that way, they are pitting themselves against you as Mm -hmm. an enemy. That's why we really don't like fighting as the method of communicating with your spouse in a marriage. Right. Because you're pitting yourselves against each other, and that's not effective in communicating. Right. Effective communication, there shouldn't be a winner and a loser. There should be both people coming to understanding. That's effective communication. So if your spouse still wants to pit you against him, and you are trying your best to not be defensive and to come back with questions— which is great. Also, they will receive it as a different attack (laughs) vector, especially if they're in fight mode. If they're in defensive mode, they're going to look at your actions as some undercover strategy (laughs) to get them to win. And so they're going to might, they might fight harder. At first. Exactly. If you can remain calm and you can remain steadfast in that approach, that will greatly improve the odds that your spouse will come around to the fact that you are being authentic yeah. in your desire for this communication to be done in a different way. Right. So it's a it's a long game. It's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. You can't do this once and be like, didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know, go right back to fighting. That's not how it's gonna be. It's gonna be a long drawn out guerrilla warfare battle yeah with your spouse yeah hopefully they will see this approach though and come to an understanding like i said it's i don't think there's a do this and your spouse will change right. sometimes they won't sometimes they don't want to mm-hmm. and you're not going to be able to say anything do anything to make them change but that's a good that's a good first step it's your only first step your only step is to change yourself yeah. and do it in the best way that you can in order to help your spouse come to a better understanding of communication. Again, you're going to fail at this too. 
because you used to fight. Mm. And that used to be your MO. So once you're starting to make these changes, one, people aren't going to believe you. And sometimes people not believing you when you're trying to get better in any aspect of your life is really disheartening. And you might get angry and default to how you used to act or how you used to communicate or what you used to do because you're disappointed in the fact that people aren't seeing your growth. Understand that people don't perceive growth in the immediacy. It needs to be something that is happening where consistency is in place and you're continuously seeming to get better before they'll notice, hey, you're different now. But that's going to take a long time. So don't get discouraged when you're not believed when they're coming with a renewed sense or a renewed intensity in the fighting because they think you're trying to do something else to get at them. Because that has been the MO. So, like, don't be surprised by that. Don't get angry at them that they think that about you because it's a new thing it really that you're is trying take, to establish. It's going to take a long time. Yeah for them to see that you actually mean it and that you're not doing it in a prideful way, but you're doing it in a way to say, I actually care about you and us. Yes. Yes. That takes time. 